Hey everybody! All right, I wanted to show you my worm farm. I haven't gotten my worms yet, but I can't believe how expensive red wiggler worms are. Really expensive. So and I got this at Home Depot. It was cheaper than Amazon at the, uh, at the time I ordered it. And it had it comes with uh, two trays and a little tray down here to catch the worm castings. So there's um, let me show you what's in here. Well, it doesn't come with the newspapers. But apparently you can put the lid on here. It has a little hook. But you will need newspapers to set it up. I haven't gotten my worms yet. This tray goes underneath to catch any of the drippings. Because you can use that to feed your plants too. And it comes with a little block of coconut core. And then from what I'm reading... You put this in about a third of a bucket of uh, water until it uh, swells up. And then you line this with the coconut, first with newspaper, wet newspaper, well, damp. Then you put the coconut core on top, and then you put your worms in. And I don't know, I have to do a little bit further research, but anyway... I thought this was a rather good looking worm bin and since I'm going to keep this in the house because your worms are temperature sensitive if it's too hot or too cold they will die. So a worm compost castings uh, it's kind of expensive to buy and you might as well just use this as compost and uh, Get rid of some of your veggie scraps, the worms will be happy, the earth will be happy, and you'll be happy too. So I'll continue this video after I get my worms and I get this set up. Well, my worms arrived today. I haven't opened the package yet because it says to keep them cool and they like the dark. So I took my cocoa core cube and I added water to it. I'm letting this soak. And you don't want it real wet, but you don't want it dry either. And they said that if you don't want a lot of water coming out when you squeeze it. So I think this is about right. And I used probably this much water to rehydrate it. And this is just one of those dollar store bins. So the next step is to get some wet newspaper and put it down in my bin and then I'm going to add this cocoa core on top of the wet newspaper and then add my worms and that's all there is to it for now okay so I have some damp newspaper here and I'm only going to be using one of these bins the other one I'll put in when uh, this one is full. So these have holes in them for the worm drippings to go down. So I'm going to layer this with newspaper. And it says damp newspaper. You don't want to drown your worms. And this will also, this will also uh, absorb some of the moisture from the cocoa core. So I'm going to put that in and get rid of one tray. Now underneath here, this comes with a tray that pulls out. And this will hold your worm droppings. And then under that, you also put a tray underneath this to catch any, any moisture that leaks out. So I'm going to put my one tray in here now. There we go. And then I'm going to start putting my cocoa core in there. So this made quite a bit of cocoa core. 
and it's all damp now. It's not too wet because like I said you don't want to drown your worms. So I'm going to just dump this in here. And then I will add my worms when I get this all situated here. And I hope they're all alive because they did come in the mail. So I'm just going to, I don't want to pack this down, but I just want to smooth it out a little bit. And that's all there is to it. So the direction said not to feed your worms right away to let them get acclimated to their new home. This is almost like having a hamster or something in your home. But anyway, um, that's it. That's it for the worm bin. And I'm going to put this up in my row room that I'm setting up. And we'll see how it goes. So let me unpack my worms. So my um, worms, I got them from Homegrown Worms, and I have 500 of them. Now they say they have about 1,000 per square foot, which this is about what this is, but the worms are so expensive. I just decided to go with 500 for now, um, and because they do multiply, and from what I read, they um, once they start breeding, every two to three months they double. So I don't want to be inundated with a million worms. But they sent these directions along with it. I also have directions that came with the um, worm bin. And I went on Amazon and downloaded a Kindle book for $1.99 about uh, verma, uh, composting. So I'm going to go and open my worms now. Now, I'm not a big fan of holding worms, but let's see what 500 red wiggler worms look like. And they don't like the light, so I'm sure they'll be going into this medium as soon as they can. But I hope they're all viable. So I'll be back once I open this. Okay, here they are. Gross, right? There's all the little red wiggler worms, and they're not liking this light. So I'm going to dump them in here, cover them up, and that's a lot of worms. Make sure I don't have any stragglers in there. So that's it. Um, and then I'm going to just take these and put them in my, in my uh, plant room. And they kind of all bunch up together. And that's as easy as it is. So I'll let you know in a while how it's doing. Now this is where I keep my worm bin. And I'm still trying to adjust to their feeding schedule. Um, they have red wigglers in here, and I'll try to open this up without disturbing them. I keep a light on in here, a little light, so they don't try to escape. But let me see what's going on in there. And I do wear gloves, because I don't like to play with the worms. So the worm bin is not unattractive. It's uh, It looks pretty good, and I never use this bathtub. Um, so that's why I put them in here, but let's look and see what's going on here in my worm farm. So I fed them a couple days ago, and I've noticed I put shredded paper on top, and you can see some of them moving around in there. They don't like the light, so they're going back under. And this is nice because it has a little hook, and you can hook it on the side, and then you can do your thing in the worm bar, uh, bin. 
So, so far I'm liking it, and I, I guess it takes a few months to make some. Oh, here's a guy trying to escape. Get in there. And I've noticed that when they start to get hungry, they'll start coming out of there, and then they start climbing around on the lid. And there's a couple in there, but I'm going to have to feed them pretty soon. So that's my worm bin, and it's it doesn't smell, nothing like that. And uh, hopefully I'll get some decent uh, worm castings out of here. So I'll keep you updated and show you when I feed them. So here is my little grow light system. This is a southwest window that I set it up for. And I just have tons of tomatoes coming up. So today is the 6th of May or the 5th, one of those two. And anyway, this is uh, one of those little three-tiered greenhouses that I've had for quite a while. And these are just regular fluorescent bulbs that I have. And I just kind of stuck this together this way, but I'm going to redo it so it's more permanent because I would like to grow lettuce in here and things like that in the wintertime. I want to try that out. So here is my compost or avocado that... Uh, it's a volunteer that I got from my composter because I put avocado seeds in there. And this one came up as twins. There's actually two that I've intertwined together. So that is that. And then over here, more tomatoes. And over here I have peppers that I dug up from my garden last fall. And I just overwintered them in front of this window. And they're different colored peppers, and those will be going in the garden very soon. And over here, I have another volunteer avocado. So, and these are some succulents that I had outside, and a lot of them died uh, before I took it in. It they were too wet. But this one managed to survive, so that is my indoor growing arrangement. But like I said, I have to redo the um, grow lights so that I can adjust them up and down because some of my seedlings are a little on the leggy side. But these are actually the containers that I prefer. I think they're three inch pots and um, they seem to grow well in there. I don't like these little these little pods. They always, I don't have much luck with those. But I like to start a bunch of seedlings in just regular old little containers, and I never thought I would get this many tomatoes. So, I don't know, I'll have to give some away. So I wanted to show you some of my miniature orchids. Um, I'm still learning about how to grow orchids, but this one did rebloom. It's got a beautiful purple flower. So that one's doing well. A couple of these I need to soak in Epsom salts because you can see their leaves are a little bit dehydrated. So these three guys, these get a little bit more sun, but they are getting new growth. And these are miniature orchids. So this one looks the healthiest of all of them, and it likes this little spot. Now this is a... Um, a west-facing window. So it doesn't get a ton of sun, but it does get sun in the afternoon. So it seems to like it here. 
but um, I found that soaking these when they get like this dehydrated, if you soak them for a couple days in a mixture of a little bit of Epsom salt, uh, they plump up again and then you can replant them. And these are very, very tiny containers. You can see by the size of my hand how small they are. But they're just delightful. I love these little guys. So those are my uh, miniature orchids. So my mom just gave me this orchid. It looks healthy, but she's got several. She's getting tired of taking care of some of her flowers, so she's kind of downsizing those. So I'm going to see if I can't get it to bloom, but I have to find some room for it. So over here I have my regular orchids. And this one over here is blooming. And I don't know, this one is getting a shoot, but I don't know. I can never tell if they're roots or flower shoots. I don't know. It could be a root. And then this one over here is blooming, but it's not open yet. So they have rebloomed for me, but as you can see, this one's getting a little dehydrated too. And uh, I need to do something with that. This fella isn't looking too happy. But I have to see what's up with that. Now this one is actually the healthiest looking, but that one has never rebloomed for me. So I don't know. I guess growing orchids is a science, but I do love them. And what I wanted to do with this window, now this is a southwest facing window which would normally be too hot for the orchids or too bright. They don't, they don't like, they can get scorched. But I have trees right in front of the window and it filters it. It would be like having a curtain up. So um, what I would like to do with this window is just have somebody install glass shelves, like three of them, and then I could just put the orchids on there because they're hard to water this way. I just have them in a just a plant stand, but um, that's a project for down the road. And then here I have an assortment of Christmas cacti, and those I actually would like to plant all in one planter. I have a planter in the garage, and so I'm thinking about putting them all in one planter and then just putting them right here. They do seem to like this window, so that's part of my indoor garden. And I thought you might like to see my orchids. And I don't have a green thumb for everything. You know, I have plants that die and then I get new ones, even though I say I'm not going to. I still do. So that's my little indoor garden. This one's in the dining room. The other one was up in a bedroom with the grow lights. So I have them all over the house. Uh-oh. And then I wanted to show you my mess. So this is my dining room table. We don't use the dining room table because we don't have that many functions anymore. But when I start planting seeds and gardening, I drag everything out and here it sits until I'm done. So this is area number one. I have to clean this up. This is just not acceptable. But let me show you area number two. So this is my mess number two, and this is on top of my washer and dryer. Makes it a little hard to do laundry, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But I have another plant shelf up here, and I have a violet in here that sort of had a baby, and uh, I just never separated them. So uh, they're both growing in the pot, and they're, it's a really pretty, pretty violet. It has like a purple edge to it. I've had it for, for a long time. So I have that growing, and uh, this is a lily plant that blooms once in a while. And then here, I bought one of those little stick things that comes in um, a package. And it's, it's a PG hydrangea, so it's got all kinds of new buds coming out. So I'm going to put that in a pot, and then I will plant that outside at some point. And this is a leek, 
that I cut the bottom off of and it's regrowing so that needs to go in the garden. This is another violet that just, it, this one never blooms, it's a white one. So, and then this was a bamboo plant that only had the tops left on it, so I cut it all off, and it's actually sitting down there in water. So anyway, this is my mess. I still have onions to plant, and then I have another elephant ear that I got from Walmart. That was before I knew my nursery was carrying them. But this, is, uh, this needs to go in the ground. So this is the bottom where the roots will come out. And this is the top. So I just got that this week. So that needs to grow, go in the ground. And this is the kind of stick thing I was talking about with the PG hydrangea. So I was surprised it grew. But these actually do have a guarantee that they will grow. So, and you never have enough spray bottles. And these are eggshells. Not very interesting that my mother gave me. It's a whole bag full. And I do crush these up and put them in my compost. And I also feed them to my worms. And then I have these little pots here that I need to wash yet. And I'm going to put all my little tomatoes up from up under my grow lights in these little pots and get them growing. And then I got these yesterday. And I think I got these from Amazon. And these are five dwarf cannas bulbs that I need to put in pots. So I can't really clean these up until I transplant my tomatoes and then all this stuff will go in the garden. So, yes, I have my work to do. And this is the little dehydrator that I was talking about. And it's really small. Remove my cleaning utensils here. And it's, it's really little. You can see, here's my hand. And it, um, I can keep this right here on the counter. Like I said, I do have a bigger one. But this is great for, like, if I trim my, um, my mint or dehydrating chives or whatever, and it has four trays. And I really like it. And for bigger projects, I drag out my other dehydrator. And, of course, everybody needs a drill with drill bits. And this is actually a little indoor composter, too. So, yes, this is my mess that I have to clean up and uh, I don't know I need to do laundry so I better get moving Yay! so the landscapers were here today and they mulched my front bed uh, these are the pots with the gladiolas in them I'll have to see how they came up and then I stuck one of those rockets from the Dollar Tree right in the middle. I don't know if anything will happen or not. doesn't matter. The gladiolas will still be coming up eventually. And so they did a good job. I like when it's newly mulched. It always looks so nice and dark. And there's my azalea blooming over there. And this bush here isn't a bush. It's little seedling things coming up from a uh, crab apple tree that was dying so apparently it wasn't that dead because those are all the little shoots coming up from that so I just keep it trimmed as a bush because otherwise I'd have to take the stump out so that's my front garden Thanks for watching and please subscribe.